Hello, my name is Kyle Suddy, and today I'm going to show you a quick tutorial uh, in the Fallout 4 Creation Kit on how to just add your own weapon to the game to make it customized and add your own stats or change some uh, assets or whatever. Uh, these will be using vanilla assets, although you can add your own assets, but that won't be covered today. Uh, this is the quick and dirty way. We're not going to add it to the leveled list. We're just going to drop it in the game ourselves and no modding experience needed. I'll teach you from the ground up. So the first thing is to download and install the creation kit for Fallout 4. It's available on Steam and we're going to launch it. Um, the creation kit is notorious for uh, loading a little slow, so it may take a little while for everything to load. Sometimes it may seem like it is crashed or it's not loading, but if you're just patient with it, it will work really well with you. I haven't had many issues. Uh, the first time you load it up, it'll probably look something like this. Uh, you might also get a pop-up of some warnings. Um, ignore those for now. Uh, you don't need to worry about them for this moment. The first thing we need to do is load in the game data. Uh, right now we don't have anything loaded in, so if you go to File Data or you click this button here, we can load in the plugins. Uh, so just starting from scratch, we're just going to load in the Fallout 4 base game. We're not going to load in anything else for now. Uh, you you'll, will be able to see like any mods you have installed here already um, and the DLCs, etc. But for now, just load the base game Fallout 4 and set as active file. Uh, and we're just going to run off the base game. Um, this tutorial assumes you um, already have Fallout 4 uh, set up so that you can mod the game or you already have mods installed. Um, if you're not sure how to do that, I suggest checking out a tutorial on just the basics of how to mod Fallout 4. Uh, any of them will work. It's very simple. As soon as you can get any mods working, then um, with Creation Kit, you'll be able to install them and run them yourself. Um, so yeah, loading the game data takes a while. We're just sitting here waiting for it to load. Um, if you try to tab out or click a bunch during this time, like tab out to see a YouTube video or something, it may cause the creation kit to crash. Uh, you might get some crashes to desktop, so it's best just to kind of leave it, let it do its thing. We're still waiting here. It might take 30 to 60 seconds, even longer than a minute, depending if you have it installed on an old hard drive or something like that versus an SSD. Uh, but this is even installed on an SSD, and it's still taking quite a while. There we go. Uh, so the base game has loaded and we still don't see anything yet. That's fine. The first thing again you'll see is this huge pop-up with a bunch of warnings. Um, it's, don't worry about these right now. We just have the base game loaded, uh, so there's nothing to worry about. Those are just some generic warnings, um, which we may look at later, but for now you don't have to worry about it. Um, so the first thing we need to do is load into a world space. Um, we're going to load into a cell, which is basically just an area in the world so that we can work in and place our item. Uh, so if you want to, for instance, look at the overworld, uh, Commonwealth is most of the overworld. It'll take a minute to load, but it'll uh, populate this list here in a moment. Um, and then we'll be able to select an area <clears throat> to work in. There we go. Uh, you can see Abernathy Farm and all these locations. We have Boston, Beacon Hill, Cambridge. Charleston, Concord. Uh, I'm going to scroll down to find Sanctuary Hills. This is an area that anybody who's played the game should be familiar with. It's right at the smack start of the game. Uh, so yeah, uh, an easy area to work in and then spawn a character in without having to like run yourself to uh, a crazy location. So yeah, Sanctuary uh, External. Uh, there's a whole bunch of areas. We'll just start with Sanctuary External. <clears throat> Double click and it will load again. It's going to take a minute here, um, but this time you will notice it finished loading once this render window will have some images in it. Um, so, yep, there we go. And it's loaded up. Um, so the render window may start a little bit small. I like to kind of drag it and make it a little bigger because then we can see where we're working. Now, the controls in this are a little finicky. It may take some getting used to. The first thing you can do is hold down shift and then drag your mouse, and that way you can rotate your camera and look around the world. And you'll probably see something like this. The world looks dark, and there's a whole bunch of weird trigger boxes around. Um, you can also um, right-click. No. You can hold your um, scroll wheel and drag the mouse to pan, to drag uh, sideways uh, and move around. And then zoom with the scroll wheel as normal, zoom in and zoom out so we can get closer back off. Um, again, holding that shift to rotate the camera and then middle click to pan around. Uh, it takes a little getting used to, but uh, you will get familiar with it as you go. 
Um, if you ever get just, you know, wonky and lost and you're not sure what's going on, try finding an item and hit the T key. That will just kind of warp you to this top of the item and then you can kind of reset your camera there. Um, but yeah, here we're in Sanctuary Hills. Again, an area you start at the game. Uh, this is kind of the first town you'll see. Um, one quick thing we can do to make this look a little cleaner to work in is we can, while you have the um, viewport selected, hit the M key and that will delete a lot of those triggers and NPC activators that we don't really need to look at at this moment. Um, and another thing we can do is spawn in the sky. If your computer can handle it, it may uh, add a little bit to the processing because we're going to do some of the post-processing live. But when you have the sky in, I just like working in this uh, model because you can kind of see how things will look once the game is fully rendered and everything when a player is inside it. Um, so yeah, from here we've got a spot. We'll just kind of load a, um, a weapon here. So um, teaching you how to create your own weapon. So we're going to start in the object window up here. This is where the entire game is. All the assets of the game exist in here. You can feel free to browse, peruse, look at some stuff. You can look at characters, some building items. Um, we want to look uh, under items and you'll find the category for weapons. And this is where all the weapons are. We're going to do it just real simple and the quick and dirty way today. We're just going to take an already existing weapon that we like, and we're going to make our own version of it. Um, so for instance, we can take the minigun here and we can right click and duplicate that. That will create a minigun copy. Um, and if you double click that, we can open up the screen for the, uh, the weapon. Another thing you can do if you're, um, looking through and you're not really sure what an object is, right click it and click preview. This will open up a preview window for us. The controls in this window are a little different from the controls in the viewport. You hold down left click to rotate and you can zoom as well. And then again, middle, um, the scroll wheel click to pan. Uh, but that way we can tell and take a look at what weapon we're looking at. And you can even um, scroll through here and see uh, the other weapons or items or pieces that you're looking for that exist in the game. So we found our minigun and we want to edit that. So um, we made our copy, minigun copy, there it is. Double click it and we'll open up the settings. <clears throat> now that we've made our own form, we're editing our own version of the minigun. We're not going to edit the normal minigun that would spawn in the, the normal game because that would mess up the normal spawn of the vanilla minigun. So we're going to edit the ID first. Um, we're going to change this uh, to whatever you want. We're going to use some naming conventions, like I'm going to use my initials and then an underscore to show Kyle, Kyle's minigun, basically. And any items I've made, I've used this KTS tag so that in the future I can search the object window for my tag KTS and then see all the objects that I've created. Um, if you click, if you change the ID and click OK, um, this form will pop up, create a new object. Right now we've already made our duplicate, so we don't need to create a new object. But if you had opened the vanilla minigun and you were editing it, change its ID and click OK, you could click yes here and it would make you a duplicate of uh, the minigun so that you wouldn't be editing the base model. Right now we already have our duplicate, so I'm going to hit no. Are you sure? Yes. This will change the name of our item to KTS underscore minigun. Now, in game, it's still just called minigun. So we're going to double click and open up the, the window again to edit the base item. Uh, so we can um, do a lot of stuff in here. We can start with the name and make, name it uh, Kyle's minigun. <clears throat> um, you know, of a, a fury. Name it something cool and awesome. Uh, and you can, right here is a ton of controls you're able to just immediately start editing and playing with. Uh, damage, base damage of each shot is eight. Let's make that 80. Um, and now it's going to do a ton of extra damage. Um, you can add legendary enchantments here or any other sort of effects that are included in the base game. You know, cryo, frenzy, radiation, bleed effects, and stuff like that. Um, yeah, you can also um, adjust the, the carry weight. You know, let's make it not take so much weight in our inventory because, you know, that's very limited in Fallout. We don't want uh, only one item and our carry weight is full. Um, you can change its, you know, reload speed, its reach. We're going to leave those as the base because we want the minigun to kind of perform around the same. Um, except we upped its damage. What else can we do? Override projectile. Instead of minigun projectile, let's add a missile projectile. Let's make the minigun fire rockets instead. That sounds fun. Um, 
yeah, you can kind of peruse through and change whatever you want. You can change the crit damage multiplier, so it can do four times damage on a crit or something like that. We can add extra damage types here. Uh, say we want to add poison damage onto our minigun, and it's going to deal 100 extra poison damage on hit. That's insane. And as you can see, it's adding up here. Our damage per second is just ridiculous. So this weapon's going to be crazy overpowered. Um, but that's kind of the fun of it. Here in the keywords area, this is where you can... <clears throat> edit a lot of how the weapon functions in the game. Uh, for example, uh, we want this weapon to appear like a legendary weapon. So when you pick it up, it's going to take up the whole screen and showcase itself and show you its name. So we're going to add a keyword here called featured item. Boom, that's all it is. And now that will pop up like a legendary does in the game, which is kind of cool. Another thing here you can see is the sound that's associated with the item, iron sight rifle and 40 minigun. Well, ours is going to fire rockets, so it would be kind of weird if you didn't hear the rocket when it was fired. So we can add our own sound, S underscore, and search for the sound of the rocket. Laser, pistol, there's the minigun one, rifle. I believe it's actually called missile. Um, let's go back up to M. Launcher, missile. There it is. So we add that, and now we'll have in addition, the sound of the missiles firing to the gun. Um, so yeah, let me check any other edits we want to make. Uh, we've been named it. Um, you can even change its appearance and stuff if you want to. Art and sound. Um, here's where all of that takes place. Um, yeah, I want to make sure to check that it's playable. That means you can pick it up and, and use it. Um, if you wanted to mess with how the guns worked, you can change here to single fire, repeatable single fire, hold to fire, automatic, that kind of stuff. And if you don't want anyone else in the game to pick up your weapon, like your the NPCs or your followers, you can check player only, and then only you can, can pick it up. Um, yeah, let's take a look. I think we're going to hit OK. And now our weapon is here. Now to add it into the game world, all you have to do is drag it and drop it. Boom. And there it is. Um, once it's in, we have some controls we can use to mess with it, move it around. Uh, you can just click and drag it and move it around like that. That'll stay sort of on the same plane. If you hold Z, that will allow you to raise it up and down like that. And then right click to uh, rotate it like that. Um, or you can open up the more fine controls using like the E key. You can open up this. And if you're familiar with the other engines, they use the same uh, conventions here for moving and rotating or the W key uh, to adjust the rotation of it. So we're just going to place it right here in the road, easy to find, and we're just going to set it there. Another thing is um, if you leave the weapon here like this, it will just stay there floating, you know, weirdly without physics attached or anything like that. Um, by the way, to deselect an item, D key. That took me forever to figure out, but that helped a lot. Um, yeah, to... Um, Going back to me, if you want to add physics to this item so it looks like it's, you know, fallen on a table correctly or something. Uh, it took me forever to figure this out, but you go to the World tab up here, and there's a setting called Run Havoc Sim. So if we have the item already selected and we click Run Havoc Sim, it will just simulate physics and let it drop to the ground. Or we can use the key Alt-H to turn that on uh, and then click on the item we want. So we turn on Run Havoc Sim, and then we click on our gun. And then it's going to fall down there just like that, and it looks more naturally placed. Uh, then we can turn the Havoc Sim off, and um, that our gun will be placed right there. Um, we can double-click on it to take a look at the settings. This is the reference window, which is just for this gun. It doesn't edit the base gun. Uh, so for this weapon only, I'm going to go ahead and add a whole bunch of ammo um, so that when we start, we don't have to <laughs> go around and scavenge. Um, but that reminds me, I'm going to edit one more thing from the base so that you can click this edit base button. It will open up your base um, weapon page again so you can go back to editing. Um, I wanted to adjust the ammo capacity from its base of 500. Let's make that 5,000 so we can just hold <clears throat> all the bullets we ever need. Okay, clicking OK saves that. Now, our version of the gun would normally spawn with zero ammo, but we added 5,000 ammo, so it's going to be full on ammo when we pick it up. Um, yeah. Let me check my notes. I think that's about it. What we want to do now is save. And if you just click the Save button here, um, it will automatically bring up the Save As. And we're going to save this as a TES plugin, which is a .esp file. Um, this has already opened up my Fallout 4 data folder. And this is where the file needs to go in order to be accessed as a mod. 
So we're going to name the mod again with our convention KTS underscore uh, Kyle's mini gun. So we can uh, identify it. Click Save. And then what you would do is use um, whatever mod software you use or whatever methods you use to make sure that that file is included in your mod package. Uh, this is Vulkan. It's from the website Nexus Mods, and it is just a file manager that manages my mods. I can turn them on and off. So under the plugins area, we will find just already there KTS Kyle's minigun. Uh, it's currently not enabled. We just need to click enable. And then that's it. The mod should be loaded for us. I'm going to make sure that the mod is deployed uh, just for good measure. And let's test it out. Click play. And I will load up a character that I've already sort of got prepared in uh, Sanctuary Hill. <clears throat> Again, this is a quick and dirty way of just placing your weapon in the game. This does not add it to the leveled list where it would be lootable, you know, randomly on an enemy or anything like that. Um, so with this method, you just want to add it um, yourself like we did. We placed it or you can add it inside a chest if you want. One note as well is if you do add it to a container, um, be sure you duplicate that container and make your own version of it. If you add it to the base container, that weapon will appear in every copy of that base container. So if you add it to like this mailbox, for instance, it will just appear in every mailbox that's copied. Instead, you want to duplicate your mailbox and name it, you know, Kyle's mailbox, and then we can add the loot manually um, if you wanted the, the weapon to appear inside a chest instead. But yeah, there it is. We're inside Sanctuary Hills, and the weapon is sitting down. There's Kyle's Minigun of Fury. Hell yeah. There it goes. It popped up like it's a legendary weapon. It shows our crazy amount of damage. We added uh, poison damage or bleed damage, whatever it was. And our 5mm ammo, which is actually going to fire rockets, has 5,000 capacity. So yeah, that's awesome. Uh, let's go to our inventory, equip it. And we're off and racing. And of course, it's going to fire. So it's very customizable, this system. You can add in, you know, change any uh, settings you want. Uh, you can change any damage numbers. You can add fire damage, freeze, and all these sort of weird effects. It's in the base editor. And uh, it doesn't really take too much to do this yourself. Add in your own gun, uh, place it, and then all you have to do is load that ESP file into your mod list and it'll be there for you. Or send it to your friends, send, the, send them the file, have them add it in their game, and then they'll come across your weapon at some point. Um, so yeah, a lot of fun. Um, that should pretty much explain it. Um, so thank you for watching.